what time is it? I can't see. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. Somebody, somebody is ready for bed. Are you tired? <laughs> She's exhausted. So I was sitting here thinking, I'm going to go to bed. And then I thought, you know, I'm going to have a little chitty chat chat. Um, by myself, I had a board meeting today, so I stayed down at the beach tonight, and I'm going home tomorrow, and I talked to my family tonight. In fact, I talked to everybody in my family today. I know that sounds strange when you have two people off at school and three people at home, one of them with autism. I talked to all of them. It was nice. My littlest, Amos, is 10, and he, um got bamboozled on Sunday because I sent him home with Daddy and I stayed uh, for work here and he, on the way home, <laughs> he said, I lost my mommy. Um, so anyway, he's real excited. He said, tomorrow's Wednesday and your hair looks pretty. You know, I bought some spray at the TJ Maxx and I went swimming in the pool um, earlier this evening and then I just sprayed that stuff in there and it got it looking good. Um, I know I did a subscriber video from the pool. We had a really good chat and most people might not understand this. They're like, what do y'all talk about? But we, um, we were talking about, um, death by suicide, which might sound like, um, an odd conversation, but we were talking about Micah Miller and what, had been thought to happen to her. Um, the woman from South Carolina, who was 30, who um, her husband was the minister or is the minister and, you know, announced in a very bizarre way that she had taken her own life the night before. And I think everybody felt like there was a lot of suspicion. And then all this stuff has come out today that, she bought the gun at Dick's. She's seen on video buying the gun. She called 911. Um, it doesn't seem like there's any question that she bought the gun and used it. Um, but we have this discussion of there's more to it than that, right? Like, why? Why, why did she do that? You know, and what her ex-husband, soon to be ex-husband's role was in her life and maybe in her um, mental health, because I think he was, according to her, um, you know, slashing her tires and... Um, she said she was scared of him and she had been telling people that was she coerced. I mean, I wasn't there, but it doesn't sound like she was. You lost a niece. A lot of people lose folks to suicide gas. Yes. Gas lighting. Right. Um, no, Jenny, she did not have children, but he had children. He had one child with his first wife. And they got divorced and then he married the next wife and then he cheated on her with Micah, who has now died. And he had four children with the second wife. And then allegedly he had this girlfriend and was out of town with her when Micah took her in life because the police said, oh, he's, his car was on 17, you know, whatever the highway was. And then you read her obituary and you hear like they love each other and they're amazing and they're wonderful and they talk all night. Like, I don't know. What troubles me is her phone was wet. She wanted to make sure they could locate her phone. Doesn't make sense to me. I, I haven't seen the evidence, so I don't know myself. Um, I do know that Robeson County is not probably where I would want um, my murder investigated. But I thought you said he did it. Well, Deborah, I wasn't there. So the research or the 
you know, all the evidence comes out today or was released yesterday that they believe it was, the police department believes it was death by suicide. I, there's something fishy about it to me, but that's what the evidence says. It just seems too odd. But so anyway, we talked about that. And then I was reading the story about um, Jake and Callum Robinson, who were the two brothers from Australia who were killed in the state of Baja, California, um, in Mexico. And I might be the only person in the history of the planet that didn't understand that Baja, California, like two words, is a state in Mexico. Why in the hell it's called Baja, California? I watched 90210 the majority of my life. Oh, just cut a straw. The majority of my life. And when Dylan McKay would talk about going to Baja, California, I thought he was in California. So anyway, I got out of the Atlas tonight and looked it up, and that's totally irrelevant to what happened. But these brothers, one um, has just finished medical school. He read today, the coroner was a pallbearer at JP's grandma's funeral. Uh-oh. Oh, Deborah. Um, that's not good. And they had gone surfing in Baja, California, which is a state in Mexico. And somebody, um, these three people came up evidently to steal the tires off their truck. Yes, Baja means below. I looked on the Atlas. It's because Baja, California was lower California, upper California. Anyway, Baja, California is the lower old California. Um, they evidently somebody was stealing their tires and they believed that the three men came up and said, hey, like, you're not stealing our tires. And they were each shot in the head and then dumped in a well. Wow. So anyway, I was thinking about these parents. Um, and from what I've found, they had... two sons, and now they've both been murdered by, you know, whoever in Mexico. And I just, I, it's hard to even, no, I have not listened to her 911 call, but I will, Amanda. I was just trying to think, like, how do these parents, um, they have these two sons and they are, one's a doctor, one's, you know, they're just amazing, cute young men and their family looks super close. They do all these things together. And then the next minute, you don't have children anymore. And then your life, that part of your life is over. And their one son was going to, um, get married. And I don't know, it, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that. And, and the reason I say, you know, only children is because, so there were two children in my family and my brother died of cancer. And then I was, you know, left. And I will say that my parents' life as parents continued. You know, they, I got married, I finished high school and college and had children and their grandparents and they're going to their grandson's first high school graduation. And, um, we're having mother's day brunch together. Like life has gone on, even though my brother is not here and we miss him terribly. I mean, we miss him so much. 
but the idea of my parents, like what would they be doing if I weren't alive, you know? My brother was 19. And I, I do know people that have lost their only children. Um, and it is, I just don't think there's probably much harder, you know? So Phyllis is asking about my book. So today I was writing um, the last chapter of my book, um, and it's about success. And really, you know, the book is about autism. And, you know, we talk about the heart of autism and diagnosis, and medicine, anxiety, and family and siblings. But now we're at this last chapter. And this last chapter is about, you know, we've gone through all these hard things of autism. We're having a child with a disability. But holy cow, the success and freedom that has come with um, knowing Amos and it's kind of similar to what we're talking about, right? Like you don't know how good you have it until you have it. I don't know. My brother was 19 and I was 15. Um, it, it just made me feel thankful. And cause I was really trying to kind of account for all these reasons I'm thankful for Amos and what he's brought to our lives. Um, and then to hear these parents fly from Australia to Mexico to pick up their son's bodies. I have two teenage sons and um, I just, I cannot wrap my mind around it. My only son passed away in a tragic way in 2013. Their friends get married, have families, and you're wondering what would have become of them. He is forever 33. Yeah, it's, you know, having children is, I remember thinking, not right away, but when they were pretty little, like, wow, I, um, this is a real risk, right? Like you're, you're giving your heart away to these people and you can lose your heart, right? And life is kind of like that. You can be all in and know that bad things are going to happen or who knows what, or you can kind of protect and shield yourself. And then I would argue that you're going to miss so much joy and amazingness. I think it's just this portion of being thankful every day for all the things, right? And even when things are crazy and chaotic and, you know, I call this month may simber like, boy, I've got so much to be thankful for. Um, Pat said, I lost both of my children to cystic fibrosis. It's been four years for my son and three for my daughter. Oh, I'm sorry that Pat, Oh, that's nice, Nick. One grieves forever. Don't have a choice. Well, so you do have a choice. I mean, that's the thing I think that um, you have a choice, you know? You don't have to keep going. And I think it's, it's a choice. Um, it's a choice. And is it, are some swallowed up by the grief? Yes, yes. Some people are can't get out from under the grief. And I could see that. I think my way of handling it <laughs> was not the right way. What I did was I just sort of thought, um, I'm going to acknowledge that this has happened, but my bad thing is out of the way. I'm done. No more bad stuff for me. Yep, I lost my brother and that's it. And so I really lived kind of this impenetrable existence for a few years. I would drive fast. I would do all sorts of things and actively think in my 
teenage mind, God won't let anything happen to me because he wouldn't do that to my parents. So I didn't really get it right until later when my best friend was diagnosed with cancer. And I was like, oh, oh, somebody has changed the rules on me. My Patrick will be forever 13. Oh, thank you for sharing his name, Victoria. You know, I think when you've lost somebody um, that you love and adore, one thing that's really important to me is that I want Adam to be remembered after I'm gone, you know, and if, where does he go if my children don't know his name or know him? Like, I don't want his existence to just fall off the earth, you know, because he was so amazing and wonderful and beautiful. And uh, I want people to remember him. Do you think sometimes we need to be taught what is a healthy way to grieve? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm saying I didn't do it the right way. I think going to counseling, I think getting help, I think all those types of things that, that we didn't do um, is smart. Yeah. I also think you can have, you know, for women, the average age of death by suicide is 51 or 52, which is not a coincidence that it's coincidence that it's the same age as menopause. Everybody loves my glasses. Uh, these came in a pack of three from TJ Maxx. They're readers. And so you can also say, well, boy, somebody, um, maybe something bad happened and it becomes kind of like a avalanche, right? Everything just sort of runs into each other. That makes sense. But anyway, I was just thinking I have a lot of, um, not a lot, but I have a, quite many followers from Australia. And I just think parents losing two children is just a lot. It's just a lot. Did your parents openly grieve your brother? You know, Leslie, to be totally honest, um, we were just trying to survive. I don't, I don't think the way my family did it was the right way at all. In fact, I might say that we, did, we did. I mean, what the hell? What do you know to do? You know, you, you're, you have this like perfect f family, or I did, you know, on this axis, and all of a sudden, just the whole thing, poof, is gone. Start a foundation, your brother's name. Do I look like I'm going to start a foundation? I need to start exercising. <laughs> I'm, we're going to remember Adam in different ways. It's not a foundation. My Connor left us at 11 years old. Oh, that's true, Kelly. My daughter, sister, sister's daughter, my niece passed away at 17. We were just trying to live. Yes, my mother did write a book for 20 years. That's true. That's true. We were just trying to survive. I don't think you can... Um, It's very hard to let yourself go as low as your heart wants to take you. Do you know what I mean? Like it is such a deep, dark place of grief that you, it's really hard to go there or to be there very long if you think too hard about it. And I remember my, my oldest son was about 10 and we were, um, we had lost a good friend, a good friend of mine's uh, husband had died. And it was really the first person that my children knew well, you know, that they had lost in their lives. And, um, 
I remember talking to to Thomas at the time, who was 10, and said, you know, um, this is hard and we're going to, this is sad. And like, we're, we're going to have some, this is hard. And he said, so I so clearly remember this. He said, not if you don't think about it. And I was like, wow, you want to talk about a cycle that I want to break is because that's, um, that's what I did. I just didn't want to think about it, you know? Um, but I didn't want my son going in that direction. My dad committed suicide at age 43 and 77. I was a senior. We grieved in our own way. We should have gone to counseling. Yeah, I agree. Just lost my autistic baby brother, age 43, hard on my parents. Oh, oh, I bet. I lost my daughter at 15. It's been three years. You know, Sandy, my dad said it took three years before he didn't wake up and just feel that crushing grief. We were in a car accident. My dad was killed. Well, I tell you what, people are walking around. You know, we're sitting here in this video and there's 1,200 people right here. And that's a lot of people. Um, lost my son at 27 days old. And people hurt and are hurting whether it's um, accidental overdose, murder, cancer, death by suicide, an accident. Um, heart attack. I mean, it is people are out there hurting. And I think we walk around on this planet and we look for things to get mad about or to get indignant over. And really, we just need to slow down a minute. And and I'm saying this for myself as much as anybody else, but like we need to stop and think if somebody's short with us or I think we we take things so personally and it's like, slow down a minute, Adrian. Maybe that person's having a bad day. Maybe her brother is sick or maybe her mother Maybe she's just had a, you know, we just don't know everybody's stories. And because we don't know everybody's stories, we have to assume that everybody has a story and everybody does have a story. No one's life is perfect. No one's, not, not no one's. Um, so I think just, slowing down, you know, slowing down. And this is the time of year where we have big, big things are happening and it's exciting. And, um, you know, I get kind of, I get kind of, I start, I really seem to enjoy treading, uh, quicksand is what I do. Um, but like, so even I'm down here at the beach and I could have gone home today. If I had hustled, 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 I could have been back home tonight by, by eight o'clock. But I was like, you know, I'm going to take the afternoon. I had work to do, but tonight I, um, took the dog on a walk, got in the pool, did a subscriber video. We had kind of a deep conversation like this. This is more of what I do over there. It's more of a conversation. And um, got out of the pool, threw on some clothes, went to Amos Mosquito for dinner, which is probably my favorite spot um, down here. And talked to people at the bar, you know, just kind of 
chilled. Had a martini, had meatloaf, um, came back, did a little work, some laundry. So it's, I guess it's self-care. I mean, I hate that term. That sounds so dorky, but just time to be in the quiet a little bit in your own thoughts and just, I think we're, we're so busy, 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 busy. And we go, 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 go. And if we're always going, we're not stopping to breathe and think, um, so that maybe we can show grace, you know? Yeah. Nobody lives forever. We all know that. Um, we all know that, but boy, it, it, it takes your breath away when it's, you know, somebody you love. Um, is it going to matter in a year or a month or a week? I, I tend to, I don't plan too far ahead. I, um, I mean, I am like today, I've talked to a friend about graduation presents. So that's a few weeks ahead, but I don't get wrapped up in like the details of how is this going to work on that morning? I'm like, eh, that's a long way away. And I learned it from my cousin, Kristen. I hope she's watching this because she knows that I'll say to her, like, Kristen would always be like, I can't, you know, plan that far ahead. And I'd be like, what does she mean? She can't plan. <laughs> no, I get it. Um, my husband was killed on Mother's Day. Oh. oh, why do you have Hunter with you? Hunter? You mean the dog, Honor? Um, why do I have Honor with me? Oh, because I just decided she needed a little break too. Honor is a service dog, but, um, She's just thought she'd enjoy it. She and I have taken some nice walks and she's gotten some good playtime because she needs attention too. So it's been nice for us to be together, you know? Even dogs have needs. <laughs> she didn't want to sit at the house all day by herself. Um, yeah, Mother's Day is tricky. You know, I think... Sometimes you're, it's almost like you're, I hadn't thought about this till just now, but it's like your body. I always, my brother died July 18th and his birthday is August 18th. And the, as the summer gets going, which I adore summer, but as it gets closer to those dates, they're heavy, they're heavy dates, particularly the anniversary of his death is very heavy. And even when you don't know it, like I won't even be aware and be like, what's wrong with me? And be like, oh, it's that. But Mother's Day is a pretty heavy date for um, the community where I grew up in North Carolina. We, I lost three childhood friends in a fire on Mother's Day at the Phi Gam House in Chapel Hill. And um, another Two more were also killed in that fire. And um, and it was Mother's Day. And I think it's, that's heavy, you know? That's heavy. Graduation day, Chapel Hill, blue sky, and suddenly everything's done. So I do think about, think about those, my childhood friends then too, you know? My birthday and wedding anniversary are August 18th. So my brother would have been 54 in August, 54. 54. It's hard to think like he was 19. And now my, my oldest son 
is 18, right? And so it's like, wow, he's 18. It's just amazing, like, to look at him and think, this was the age of my brother, this, like, passing over each other, you know. Um, but, yeah, look for good things that, yo, I mean, there is beauty in in every day. And I think Amos, you know, talking again about this success in life with him, you know, I used to think that good things had to be big things or success had to be big things like, you know, finishing medical school or getting into Duke or big, big things, you know. And now it's not. It might be the fact that somebody learns how to use scissors or Amos learned to carry his own backpack or use a spoon, like all those little mosquito wings that Thoreau talked about. Those are the raindrops, you know? And yes, we think of, oh, we need rain, it's dry. But without all the raindrops, it would just be a washout, right? You want the drops. That's the beauty, the raindrops. Uh, so anyway, thank y'all for letting me kind of talk through some of those thoughts. Yeah, and I think, you know, the reason I started this page is because I was... I was drowning in fear and grief and hurt. And I just, I didn't know what to do with all these feelings. Um, I had buried and shoved down feelings for such a long time. Um, and then when Amos came along, there wasn't any more room for any hurt. And so I had to, I started writing and sharing and um, as I did that and grieving, really, I was like, wow, the joy is coming back, you know? Um, and the, it wasn't so heavy and it didn't own me. Um, and I was able to look, see good stuff instead of just the hurt stuff, you know? So anyway, that's why I started this um, is because of these feelings and not wanting them to own me. Um, and so I, I do, sometimes people will say, well, it's fine for you. You know, you can tell everybody you weigh 180 pounds or whatever the hell I do. Um, but I'm private. And I would say to you, I get it. I totally get it. Like you don't have to shout every detail of your existence to the world. But I will say that that sharing and transparency and disclosure, I really do think is why I have joy. I don't think I could have gotten there any other way than through the transparency and the sharing, you know? And maybe I could have, you know, maybe I could have just but I feel very strongly that it happened through this type of process of what we're doing. And yes, people say it's cathartic. I don't, the word cathartic to me somehow seems nice. What I have been through personally go, do, doing this writing, hey, Alyssa, um, it has not been cathartic. It's been hard as mother fricker frickety frick frick because you're you're lowering lowering yourself into those dark caverns of feelings and i mean my my very self is like get out run get the fuck out of here hurry <laughs> that's my instinct right and so the pushing through and the feeling the feelings and the talking the feelings and the writing the feelings is, I don't know, I, I ain't saying it's any cathartic. It is hard. It's why I can't exercise. I wear myself out. <laughs> True story. 
Um, but boy, it's important. You are what I hope to be someday. So sad now, but hopeful. Well, I hope so, Sarah Beth. I, um, I hope so. I think, I think we all need to know that we're, we're in this together and that there's nobody out there that feels like they've got it all figured out, you know? And I think we have a tendency, we want the world to think we've got it figured out, right? Like we want people to look at us and say, wow, look at her. She's got it all together. Um, you know, I sort of feel prideful when I'm like, look, I've got a makeup. I remember jewelry. I washed my hair. I mean, I am looking good. But Beth Moore says we compare our insides to other people's outsides. So I think making sure that our outside matches our inside um, and telling, telling the truth, like, how are you? How, how is everything? You know, I try to really answer um, Amos as a gift. Try to really answer questions in a real way. When I share my daughter died, they don't know what to say. Yeah, and I think you can say, you know, what I say to somebody is, I am so sorry, and I don't know what to say, and I don't know how you're feeling, but I just want you to know that I really do care. You know, I care. Um, because no, what nobody wants is for people not to say anything, you know, everybody wants to be acknowledged and not in like a, now I'll tell you one thing not to do. Ain't nobody like any pity. Nothing worse than pity. But now I don't mind a little down in the trenches, you know? It's hard to shower and get ready to go somewhere. It's very stressful. It's the loss of my former life that almost broke me. I could see that. Um, yeah, no pity. Our pastor said to also ask them if they are comfortable to share what that person was like and what they meant to you. Wait, you're supposed to ask, like somebody should ask that to me. Yeah, do not do that. No, ask me that. I cry. I'll tell you what to do. And not, I'm not, I'm not a real pastor. I just play one on TV. What I like is, and I would say, I think most people feel this exact same way because I've received enough affirmation about it, is that I love nothing more than hearing other people talk about my brother. But no, I don't really want to be asked about him. <laughs> that sounds terrible, doesn't it? But it's true. It, it's too, it's too tender. It's the same way that I have to answer the frickin' question at the IEP meetings when they say, what are your dreams for Amos? And I basically want to be like, eh, 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 to the person who's asking, you know, love when you mention Cliffy. Yeah. So there's a good, there's a good example. So her family member was a friend of mine, Cliffy, and Cliffy was hysterical. You know, like you want to hear stories. So if I, I love when we um, were out in Jackson Hole, 
my brother's roommate was there. And um, I just felt so close to Adam and having Latham tell. In fact, I don't think we told enough stories. We had Amos on a snowmobile all day. So that sort of <laughs> took away from our conversation. But where did these pajamas come from? Well, they originally came from J. Crew in their double XL and they were real comfortable. But I got them from the clothes closet in Edenton and they were half off day. So they were $2. I liked them a lot. My sister died. I don't like to talk about her either. I would cry. Yeah, I think you kind of have to know when you, when you are ready. But I love somebody else telling a story. Um, and I love telling my children's stories, you know, because I want them to know Adam or my parents telling stories, you know, but boy, it's taken a long time to get there. Um, it's taken a long time. I'm um, sorry, Maureen. Oh, that's right, Debbie. My mom did not know her well and gave her you. Oh, yeah, it's just special. I um have a friend, and I she's not an old friend, but I knew she lost her husband a few years ago, and I know her um boys. And I made a, I always make a point of saying to siblings, children, I make a point of talking about the person that I know they lost. So I might say like, boy, I know y'all's dad would be so happy to see this or he would be laughing at this or, you know what I bet he would say just because that's the kind of thing I want to hear, you know, um, because especially for big things coming up, Mother's Day, graduation, all these big, big um, events, which is when we miss our people, you know, that's when we miss our people. Um a leader in a grief support group. Hmm. I don't know how good I'd be. I might like lay on the floor and cry. Um, yes, that's exactly right, Susan. My son's graduation is a really big thing coming up for me. And it's funny. I think a lot of mothers are like, oh, graduating, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I, to be totally honest, I have a few thoughts and it's because of my own past experiences. One, I am so thankful he's graduating. I just feel so blessed to have this son, um, who is 18 and a half. And I just am so proud of him. And I'm so glad he's here and graduating. Like I, Mother's Day is hard for those who cannot have one child. Oh, I'm sure it is, Kathy. I'm just so happy for him. And I think the other part of it, and I think my friend Sheila would know this, is that I'm, I wish my brother were going to be there and not just him, but, you know, because life can be perfect in your own mind. I think Adam would have gotten married and had children and they would have all come to the graduation, right? Because that's what you do when you have first cousins, you go to graduations, just like I went to my cousin's graduations and they came to mine where now with my son, you know, he has his younger brother and sister will be there. Our youngest with Amos with autism is not going to be at graduation because it's 
it's too much. Um, it's too much. And we all want him there, but I, I cannot figure out how to, I, I don't want to miss this moment for the oldest one. So anyway, and then I'm missing all these people. I'm like, in my mind, graduation is 20 people, you know, getting together and doing fun stuff. And we don't have that, you know, but I can't sit and I can acknowledge like, that makes me sad. And, but then because I've acknowledged it and felt the feelings, they don't own me. And I guess that's the part that, um, we have to get comfortable doing. And it's really hard. Boy, it's hard. Because it's way easier just to pretend everything's fine and yay and yeah. You know, but that's not really what it is. Um, so anyway, do they live stream graduation? So we're going to do something kind of, to me, fun since Amos is not coming to graduation, Thomas and his friends are going to come and spend the night in Edenton on the way to their senior beach week. And so I'm going to do a cake and we're going to have kind of a graduation party that Amos can be a part of, which will be perfect for him. Amos loves a party. He likes to pop in and out of a party and he loves big kids. He calls them all the brothers when Thomas's friends come. And so I feel good about it, and I think um, Thomas feels good about it. <laughs> this is a depressing life. <laughs> but, you know, it's a means to an end. It's a means to an end. If, if you don't feel the feelings, acknowledge the feelings, they are going to weigh you down, and they weighed me down for so freaking long. I had no idea until I realized like, boy, I have to weigh again. Will you go to senior beach week? Uh, yes. Not the whole time. Cause I don't want to leave Amos again, but yes, I will be at senior beach week. I am not telling my senior what nights I will be there because I do not want him to plan a party. So I am keeping my dates, their top secret. I'm going to do what my parents also did. I'm going to, I was sitting right here and I think Cliffy, who we were talking about a little while ago was here sitting on this, well, it was a different couch, but the kitchen was the same. You're sitting in here and my parents, you know, would call. And back then, I don't think you had a, you had a, um, you had a real phone. Hello. Hi, daddy. What? Yeah, we're in New Bern. We're heading on to the beach. I thought you were coming tomorrow. No, I got away today. Well, what? What time are you going to be here? In an hour? They're going to be in an hour! And then, everybody, get out! Get out! You're picking up all the cups and beer cans and scissors run into the, to the trash can you're just putting out cigarettes and then you're sitting on the couch and you'd be like what time is it where are they maybe they've gone to eat an hour hour and 15 minutes i call dad where are y'all I'm just kidding. We're in Rocky Mount. Oh, now the party's over. <laughs> I mean, that made me mad as frickin', you know what? I made everybody leave. So that's what I'm going to do. Don't tell them. Yeah, I'm going to pretend I'm not coming Monday. And then I'm going to be like, guess what? I'm on the way. I'm just going to pop in. A pop tart. Um, Y'all have a good night. I'm going to bed so I can get up in the morning 
and get ready to go back to my crazy house full of people. But be kind to yourself. Be kind.